Okay, so in the previous video we tried to solve a tangent line problem, but we just failed miserably because we didn't know how to evaluate the limit. So we need to learn more about the limits. So what I'll do now is just stay completely informal, but give you a flavor of what limits are about and how we can evaluate limits such as the one that we had in the previous video. Okay, so here's an informal definition of a limit. So we write this fancy notation here and we say the limit of the function f of x as x approaches a is equal to the number l if we can make the values of the function f of x arbitrarily close to l by taking x sufficiently close to a. So in plain language what that means is that as x gets closer to a then f of x gets closer to l. Now there's two important things here. One important thing is that you can actually bring f of x as close as you want to l. So it's not like, you know, f of x is getting pretty close to l, but no, you can bring it as close as you want. All you have to do is take x to be very, very, very close to a. So that's important. Second thing here is I can, a, I can take x to be close to a, but on either side of a. And that is very important. So what that means is that if I approach a by x being greater than a, then f of x should get closer to l. But if I approach a by x being slightly smaller than a, then f of x should also go towards l, and the same number l here. Otherwise, the limit here is not well defined. OK, so how can I use that to uh, solve, to, to evaluate the limit that we had in the previous video? So our previous limit was the limit as x goes to 1 of the function x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. And we had no idea how to evaluate this limit. Well, let me try to do it. So what we'll do first is just evaluate it numerically. So just guess the answer by looking at values of x and the corresponding values of the function closer and closer to 1. And I'll do that on both sides to make sure that my function approaches the same number if I take x to be close to a on either side of 1. OK, so here I have my value of x. And here I have the value of my function, x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. So I'll start with a value of x here, which is quite big and quite far from 1, but it's a good starting point. So if I take x to be 2, then my function here is actually equal to 3. And then I've already calculated the value of the function for different numbers of x, different values of x. I get something like this for 1.75. 1.5, I think I get 2.5. And then if I get closer to 1, say 1.01, I get 2.01. 1.001, then I get something like 2.001. So you see that as x gets closer to 1, the function here gets closer and closer to 2. Okay, now let's see if the same is true from the other side. That's quite important, because if it's not true, then the limit is not well defined. So let's start with 0. So here the function is just equal to 1. Now again, if I take closer to x, I'll get something like 1.25, 0 0.5, I think I get 1.5. You can check that on your calculator. And as I get closer, 0 0.99, say I'll get something like 1.99, 0 0.999, I think I get 1.999. So you see that it also gets close to the same number, which is 2. So from this, I can guess or deduce that the limit of my function as x goes to 1 should be equal to 2. Now, this is not a proof. All I've done here is basically calculate uh, the value of the function for a bunch of random values of x getting closer and closer to 1. So I can see the behavior of my function, and I can deduce that this is true. But this is not a proof. We'll see in the upcoming weeks how we can prove that this is true uh, using rigorous properties of limits. OK, now if I go back to the tangent line problem, that we had in our previous video. So recall that we had this function here, and we were trying to calculate the value of the, or the equation of the tangent line at the point 1 minus 1. So something like that. And we calculated that the slope was equal to the limit as x goes to 1 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. But then we got stuck because we didn't know how to evaluate this limit. Well, if we take the guess that we had, uh, that we just did, seriously, then we know that this should be equal to 2. So from this, we can actually write down the equation of the tangent line. All we have to do is use the slope formula. So we know that the slope, which is 2, has to be equal to y 
minus the y coordinates. So remember, we call it our point here has coordinates one minus one. So y minus the y coordinate divided by x minus the x coordinate, which is just y plus one, x minus one. And that gives us the equation of our line. So we can put that in a nicer way just by bringing the y here, multiplying by x minus one. So we get two times x minus one minus one, which is really just two x minus two minus one minus three. So that's the equation of the tangent line at the point one minus one. Great, but the key point here was to evaluate this limit, which we didn't know how to do. And in fact, we still don't know. All we've done is just evaluate it numerically by taking values of x getting closer and closer to one and observing that the value of the function gets closer and closer to two. Now let's study this function a little more carefully. Okay, so our function is f of x is equal to x squared minus one over x minus one. Now that looks like a very complicated function. It's actually not that bad. So the first thing you can realize is that you can rewrite it in a simpler way. So x squared minus one is just x minus one times x plus one. Right? So I can write the function like this. And then as long as the x is not equal to one, I can cancel these two terms and I get just x plus one. That's if x is not equal to one. So in other words, I can rewrite the exact same function in the simpler way as follows. So the function f of x is equal to x plus one if x is not equal to one, and it's actually undefined if x is equal to one because, well, that would give zero over zero, which is not well defined. Now this is our function. Now what does it look like? Well, if I sketch this function, it's really just a line, right? But there's a special point. There's the point x equals to one here with the point one, two, which is just a hole in the line. So away from this point, my function is just x plus one, but it's not well defined at this point, so I have a little hole here. And now we can understand what the limit means. So if I take x to become close to one from either side, well, I see very clearly that the function f of x gets close to two, even though the function f of x is not well defined at one. I mean, I see the limit is well defined. Right. So let's just evaluate that explicitly. So the limit as x goes to one of my function, I can evaluate it as follows. So recall that taking the limit means that we're taking x to be close to one, but not equal to one. So if I look at my new definition of the function here, I, x is not equal to one, so I can replace my function by x plus one. So I'll get something like this. And now evaluating the limit, because everything is well-defined, just amount to replacing x by one. And I get two. Now this is exactly how we prove that the limit here really is equal to two. And we see that it makes sense from the graph here. And what's important to note here is that the limit is perfectly well-defined, even if the function itself is undefined. This is not something to worry about. This is perfectly fine. It will happen very often. The function may not be well-defined but the limit may very well be well-defined.